forward to this. All right, guys, welcome back to episode two in our Beyond Programming tutorial series. Uh, today, we're going to go over chapter two of the DM guide. Um, I will link that in the description if you need any extra assistance, understanding anything, you can read over it in there. So, first off, I updated the player sprite. Just with some free artwork, that way it looks a little bit better. We're not looking at some crappy artwork the entire time. Um, if you'd like to download the art we use in here, you can go ahead and join our Discord server and download it right through there. Um, but if not, it's fine, you don't need it, it's just for visual. So, let's start today by going over inheritance. So we're going to do some inheritance with turfs. So we're going to set up a few different types of grass that are all going to be turf types. So let's just start this and I will explain as we get through here. So right now we have turf and grass and we assign the icon and the icon state. But if we want to inherit from our existing type, if we want to have turf, grass, uh, green grass, then we can go green grass and we can say icon state equals green grass. And we'll go ahead and set up the other two just while we're here. We'll set up yellow grass. and brown grass. So all three of these are of the type turf grass. So this is turf grass, green grass. This is turf grass, yellow grass. And this is turf grass, brown grass. So they all inherit all of the properties of turf and all of the properties of grass. Now, because for grass we are assigning an icon to it, we know that since green grass inherits from grass, that the icon by default for green grass is going to be whatever its parent is, which is grass. So it's going to have grass.dmi. So in grass.dmi, we're going to want to set up our three different grass types in here. So let's change this. We'll call this green grass. And we're going to make the other two types. So we'll have yellow grass and brown grass. Let's go ahead and recolor these so we can see the difference real quick. So we'll just make this yellow doesn't need to be very pretty as long as we can see. Ooh, we'll make that a little darker. There. We'll do the same for brown. Yeah. All right. Let's go and build compile. So we took out the icon state from turf grass. So if we go into the test map, you're gonna see our grass we were using is no longer in here. That's because we've redefined the pathings. But now, turf grass, now we have all three of our grass in here. So we can go ahead and build the world with that. We'll put a little brown grass. And just so you can see all of it's in here. So now if we were to compile and run, come up here, you can see our different grass types. Now, if this is confusing for you, I drew up a little diagram to help explain what's going on here a little bit better. So uh, in Beyond, we have Atom, which stands for Area Turf Object Mob. 
Uh, don't worry about most of these right now. We're just going to start off today with going over turf. So, turf inherits from Adam, or is part of Adam, and it has all sorts of default variables. Um, you can actually, if you press F1, you can come in here, and you can type turf, and you can see all these different variables that are built into turf. Easy to look at. So, every child of turf is able to access the variables of turf. So when we make grass as a child of turf, grass has access to everything turf has access to. And that's the simple concept behind the inheritance here. So, and this can go down for as far as we want, right? So if we have turf, anything we put on turf is accessed by grass and accessed by all of these, since all of these inherit from grass, which inherits from turf. So grass is our custom path, and so is green, yellow, and brown. If we come and assign a variable to grass, up, you know, there's our example, turf grass variable, we create a variable called custom var and we set it to hey. If you were to output this variable on grass, it would output hey, you know, down here. Um, green grass inherits from this, so it would output hey. Just be, it's inheriting from the parent. But if we were to set up a or change the variable on brown grass our custom bear on brown grass even though it's inheriting from grass we're overriding the value on brown grass and when you output it would say whatever the variable is Let's say buy in this kind in this instance and that's kind of the the general idea of inheritance it's don't don't feel too overwhelmed we're going to go much more in depth in a later video but for now just become familiar with the idea of how inheritance works. So, uh, another thing is if you've ever programmed in Python, you might be a little more familiar with the syntax in uh, DM, but we can actually change our syntax a little bit if you want. It's not necessary, but just as a example, we're able to use um, curly brackets and semicolons if that's what you want to do so we can do let's just say for example we want to set up a new turf named dirt and we want to encapsulate it you can do this as well And this works exactly the same as this. All we're doing is we're adding the braces around it. And this is optional, you don't have to do it. You can use the same uh, semicolon as you would in other languages to close off your line. Also unnecessary, but it is an optional thing. So we compile it, there's still no errors because everything is A-OK. -okay. So let's say we have an error in the compiler. You know, if you type something wrong, when you go to compile, you get an error. You can see right down here, our error, and it tells you what line it is. It's in testproject.dm on line 41. There's an error. This is an undefined variable. You can double click it and it will highlight it right here in your code. You can try to figure out what's wrong, and you easily can fix that. Recompile, and the error is gone. Uh, and lastly, I briefly talked about this in the last video, but for comments, you can easily comment your code out. Uh, the compiler will skip over it. If It's useful if you'd like to leave notes, which you definitely should. A lot of programmers don't leave notes and they go it's fine i'll remember what happens and three months later they're looking through their source and they have no idea what the hell is happening that's very common so uh some developers like to add a little note at the top and that's fine some like to add 
notes after the lines. This is fine too. You can add it over here. And that's fine too. You're also going to use it to take out some code that you might use later. And instead of having to go through and comment out every line, which is a hassle, you can just do a slash a star and we'll end it here. And you can see now only what's in here is commented out. So that is it for this video and you can, I will link the guide so you can read over exactly what we've been talking about in this video if you're a little lost or confused. Uh, but don't worry, we'll be getting into more chapters and going over more things. Um, if you'd like to join our Discord, we are more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So uh, that's it, and we'll see you next time.